Welcome, David and Marco. Uh, this is the first time we're doing a, uh, a three-way podcast here. This is fantastic. Today, it's pretty exciting because you guys have a launched a website. You guys have uh, a company that you've started together called Alto Basso. And uh, so the subject matter today, we'll be talking about your company, what it could uh, provide for, for people, and the exciting topic of uh, laneway and garden suites. Uh, well, first of all, Rick, thanks so much for having us on. Um, you know, when when you first started your podcast and you wrote your book, um, you know, it was really focused on on um, condos in Toronto, and which is an awesome investment. Anybody should buy your book and read about it. Um, but we're really impressed on how you kind of switched around and, and, you know, in conversations with Marco and myself, myself as a real estate agent and Marco as a mortgage broker, um, come around to also see that there's other investment opportunities um, outside of, of just condos. So general real estate uh, and this and what we are is, you know, another, I guess, branch on that real estate investment uh, portfolio that people may have, whether it's, it's you know, a corporate REIT or, and, then, and then condos and then what we're going to introduce, uh, which is uh, accessory uh, dwelling units or secondary dwelling units um, that have become uh, pretty popular today. So, so thank you very much and, and thank you for having an open mind uh, towards this stuff and, and learning about it. For sure. This is great. Thank you. So, so David's our... Uh, uh, an excellent, uh, you know, realtor, professional, been in the industry for quite a long time. Um, and, um, and Marco, again, has uh, helped many with their mortgage and financing needs. So sounds like you guys make a great team for this new, new company. So, um, so on that note, if you, if you want to say a few words, Marco, and, uh, and perhaps just Talk about how how did Alto Basso um, you know come to be? Yeah, uh, thanks, Rick. And uh, yeah, um, I agree and uh, uh, concur with Dave. Um, you, you've been great for us uh, to give us the opportunity and the platform uh, to have us on individually uh, for each of our respective uh, uh, professions. And um, it's because of that 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 actually is a good segue to how we came to be. Um, Dave was instrumental, uh, in my view, because, uh, independently, we were both thinking of the space, but not together until, um, a, a an open house, which I helped Dave with in the city of Toronto that I had the, what I thought was an opportunity to, um, have a laneway or garden suite. And Dave right away picked up on it and, um, introduced, uh, me to uh, an alternative material in, in the construction world where you know, we believe uh, it's gonna become the future, but it basically came together where it, the, let's say the genesis was, was at that point uh, a couple of years ago. It's been about, uh, yeah, it's been about, it's been over two years now uh, that we've yeah. been in the space and um, just discussing which locations and financing even before it became, you know, something that it's become now, right? Laneways have been uh, available to be uh, built. Garden homes, on the other hand, depending on the jurisdiction, uh, newer. But um, yeah, our genesis was um, Dave as a realtor, giving me an opportunity to assist them in an open house. I think that was November of 2019, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, Dave. Yeah, it's, yeah the fall of 2019. And before just before COVID, so right. um, you know that obviously there's uh, you know COVID brought about both you know positive and negative aspects to to, to everything. Obviously, it, I mean nobody could see it as positive, but in the real estate world, we all saw what happened. And yeah. what the the positive when I say that in the respect is is that it brought to light what need there is for alternative housing. Uh, in our market that's beyond just condos and single homes. So that there's different um, necessities that we're never going to catch up on if we're just focused on single family dwellings or, or, or condos because they're just, uh, we, we need alternatives. And then that's where Marco and I agreed uh, that, you know, having the opportunity to have a, uh, you know, a separate dwelling and a separate autonomous dwelling. And when I say that, that's an important distinction because basement apartments are legal in Toronto and people have, 
what uh, you know in the investment world is called up and downs, where they, where they split the house up and, and there's a basement apartment and a unit, um, right. right? So so a secondary dwelling or an, or an accessory dwelling, you know, when we're talking about it can be something that's attached to the house, like a, a you know. Um, something that looks like an addition, but with a separate entrance to it, that it's its own autonomous space from the house itself. Uh, basement apartments can be that as well. Um, but what the city of Toronto recently has uh, completely approved now, that there was a bit of a controversy for, for a few months, is a complete separate dwelling that could sit in your backyard if your house qualifies for it, um, whether on a laneway or not. Uh, that can stand alone and have its own sewage, its own water, its own electricity, can, you know, completely separate from the house that that uh, that stands on its own. Yeah, this is great. This is really uh, out of the box thinking. Um, you know, we we need to have these these solutions uh, based on the market out there. So, so the significance of Alto Basso in this in this market um, to assist individual clients or or builders, architects. If you can comment a little bit on that, uh, I took a, you know, I took a look at your website, you know, fantastic job, by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll post a link for everyone to, to view and visit. It's got some fantastic information there. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to talk a little bit about how, how you're able to help uh, individuals, clients, uh, and the like on, on this exciting uh, alternative. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, for for Dave and myself, again, in, in each of our respective um, uh, professions outside of Alto Basso Build Solutions is, um, you know, it, we're trying, both of our worlds independently uh, try to help people with, with uh, housing, right? So we look at what the current market is. We look at, you know, the Bank of Canada raising its uh, its overnight rate by a full percentage point. Mm -hmm. We discussed, Dave and I, yourself also, Rick, um, solutions for people, right? So that, that's the part of our name that is, you know, is key, right? It, it's, it, it's that, it's a solution. So uh, people have different budgets. We look at the price of condos. We look at the price of what an entry level investment may be, right? And we try to help people, current homeowners, uh, those are going to be the ones to benefit, I would say, uh, the most right now, because if you have uh, a, a smaller uh, uh, mortgage or loan to value on your property, uh, building one of these, you know, essentially, because it is, it's a, a, a fully detached home, smaller home yeah. on your your property, right? So there's the Alto Basso in the name. The Alto means uh, tall, Basso means short. Uh, besides Dave being tall and me short, um, also the way that the property uh, outline when you look at, you know, uh, uh, renderings of uh, a property that has a garden home or a laneway home, your primary home is the taller one and your, you know, your secondary dwelling unit is the, is the smaller one. You know, 93% of Canadians uh, over 65 want to stay in, in the dwellings that they have always lived in, right? Exactly. And it could be for, for decades. Some of these homes have no uh, mortgages. Many of them don't. So they can become de facto either investors or, um, uh, you know, they can help their kids through uh, different financing products to create these, uh, these uh, um, uh, uh, separately or, you know, secondary dwelling units right. uh, for themselves or their kids or as invest, as, you know, uh, uh, you know, junior investors to 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 help with the the you know to help their uh, their lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, the market is is dynamic, and, and uh, you know, this is again out of, out of out of the box, taking advantage uh, of the current market situation. Um, so just tell me something here. Now, I, for example, live in Brampton. I know people who live in you know Milton, Toronto. Uh, who, who's the let's say the main target or, or who's allowed to actually put one of these on their property. For example, yeah. if I had the space, can I put one in a, these, one of these secondary dwelling units, SDUs in my backyard, if I had the space to do it or is well, it? I, as of right now, Brampton is not approved. Um, so Brampton, Mississauga, Phil Burlington, 
in Milton have not approved garden homes as of yet. But if you live in Toronto, or if you live in uh, Hamilton, if you live in uh, Welland, St. Catharines, uh, a lot of the Niagara Peninsula has Guelph, Kitchener, Waterloo, um, Brantford. Or, Brantford, yeah, uh, Barry. Uh, so, so it's all it's it, it's been part of the plan. Uh, and as you know, it's been articulated by the uh, Ontario government as the 1.5 million units uh, plan now. But but initially, it was, um, in the current minister, uh, and I'm sorry, his name eludes me. Marco, maybe you could help me out. Um, so who, clerk. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the, who wrote Bill 108 with this in mind? You know, they they saw this back in you know even 10 years ago um, or eight years ago that that this was going to happen. So. Uh, slowly the municipalities are coming into line and, and everybody's you know obviously there, there's a lot of fight against it um this is right. normal um there was in toronto and and some of it is justified we, we we need to have some control over what's going on in your backyard both both you know we don't want people putting creating shanty towns essentially there has to be some standards yeah you, know, sure you don't you know so so there had it, it is a slow moving process and by the time all of ontario is on board it could take maybe the better part of a decade, but but slowly the bigger municipalities are falling. So you and Brampton wouldn't be able to do it. But if you said, okay, you know what, um, I don't want to buy a condo, I'm, I'm condoed out. You know, you have your four condos. Um, give me another alternative. Well, okay, um, we know that, that there's a, a huge rental shortage right now. Um, it is it is uh, July of 2022. And I can tell you, I've been on the market looking for past clients um, and referrals for rentals, and it is an absolute nightmare. I mean, if I, it, I'm not going to swear because we're on a podcast, but it, it's, yeah, I've walked away like cursing, uh, you know, just, just unbelievable. And, and that's a factor of, you know, interest rates going up, affordability, not being there for a few years, and, and, and the condo market uh, is just strapped out. Prices, in the last time I checked, which was a couple of weeks ago in Mississauga, for a one plus one bedroom or in, a, in the range of, and you could concur this Rick, around 23 or $2,400. Yeah. Uh, and that's for 650 square feet. So, so let's say that, that, um, it, you know, you, you know, prices of the condos up, you, you want to look at another alternative. Well, people are, are, are moving out. They're going and buying those houses in Hamilton and um, living out there or renting out there. So it also gives an op- opportunity for the investor client to say, okay, well, let, let's buy one of these properties, convert it to an up and down and put, put a, uh, so an upper unit, a lower unit, a triplex in, in, es- in essence, and then put a unit in the backyard. Not every property will qualify for that, but the need, need is out there. Yeah, um, that, that sounds like a great investment opportunity and a, a good alternative. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah it, and we it, see it, it with uh, some, some clients where because they have those properties rather than, again, with respect to what's going on in the market right now, both real estate uh, and obviously connected with, uh, uh, with financing, is that it, rather than going to buy an, another property with this, um, you know, with, with, with this new you know, a possibility, you can build another uh, home on your property for a fraction of the price. And we can discuss a little bit in terms of ranges there, because I'm sure a lot of your viewers, uh, um, you know, they're going to want to know well, what one of these things uh, cost. So yeah. you know, we can segue into that uh, when 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 we're ready. But yeah, uh, um, uh, back to Dave's uh, point, you, you know, there are still people that you know they want to be looking for that property. I have clients right now that you know first we're looking condo, 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 and then you look at the pricing and you say. You know, just a little bit outside your city where you can do what Dave uh, uh, um, said about an, an up and down. Uh, um, you know, you have your upstairs unit, your downstairs unit. So Alto Basso Build Solutions uh, also helps people with renovations or additions as well, not just the secondary dwelling unit. But on these properties, maybe not right away, but, you know, it, depending on people's budgets, maybe they wait another year or two years. But when you know that you can build another uh, um, uh, separately detached home on the same property, which we have a, a you know a current client. Um, she's doing that with her property in in Hamilton. It's so it's 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 a win win for uh, for her. Uh, obviously, the value of her of her property in in due time. Um, but definitely, as a you know, for people that are fixated on cash flow, 
um, very difficult to be building one of these units if it's built in the right area and built correctly that you can't cash flow from it. Yeah. No, that makes sense because I've been looking at some numbers just again for for condos in Toronto and especially with the interest rates the way they've been going and and the prices. Um, you know, I did a little uh, video uh, not too long ago, and and you know, it's it's hard to find something that is is cash flow neutral uh, in many cases with with the way the current market is. You know. I, I did a looked at one of them the other day and, and, you know, ended up that it was going to be negative six, $700 yeah. uh, negative cash flow, which doesn't make sense to, um, to do that. So, so it's interesting, right? Cause you and I have been in the condo market for a long time and you start to see that um, despite, you know, every time I go downtown, it seems like there's a new building that's going up. There's still not enough volume. And, and now with interest right. rates going up, um, you know, people are, are, you know, are curling back. So, so now that lower, they're coming back into that condo market because that's all they can afford. So it's, it's rate the prices, there's pressure on the prices. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible, you know, how, how, how much stock we actually need in order to, to see some leveling of, of prices. But, but that being said, um, we also need to stress that, that uh, currently more than 50% uh, of, of the potential market um, for uh, SDUs or ADUs are uh, are not only investors but but are actually homeowners that that are building for themselves. So to age in place, uh, right. which Marco touched on, on on when he spoke on his uh, podcast with regards to uh, reverse mortgages, right? And uh, or even even there was a case uh, in the newspaper a couple of months ago where. Um, right at the cusp of where uh, garden homes in Toronto were being, um, uh, there was a moratorium on them because there was several organizations that were trying to block them. That's been subsequently uh, uh, dismissed um, where uh, a, a family said, we're trying to build a home in our backyard for mm -hmm. our kids to live in because they can't afford a $1.6 million home. So we're going to build a half a million dollar home in our backyard and right. our kids can rent that from us, right? Makes sense. And, 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 and to think about the power of that, like, so so uh, here's a, a family, that instead of spending, you know, they have the opportunity, they have the land, it's there. Instead of spending $1.4 million on a on a house, they build a house in their backyard. Their kids live there yeah. while they're having children of their own. And then they can move out or whatever they do. And then the parents, because it's a smaller home, they can equip that home to leave their main home, which is the bigger home, and move into the smaller home and rent out the main home. Lots of options there, yeah. There's tons of options, right? And 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 multi. So I just was reading an article this morning on multi generational living, which is kind of, you know, seems a little foreign to us, um, but it has happened. I mean, you and the three of us are all part of the Italian community, and we know that that you know a lot of, the, especially generations before us, it was pretty customary to put your to, to have, um, you know, parents and, and children living in the same house, multi-generational, uh, you know, over in Europe, that's that's quite common, but they don't necessarily live on top of each other. So so my if we go to Italy, we have, my parents have land there that's been passed through generations, but nobody actually lives with each other, but they're, it's like a little community where all the houses are kind of attached together, but they all have their own autonomy. So right. so that that's the important distinction is, is in multi-generational living is that people, um, have the dignity of having their own autonomy and, and you know your parents live in your backyard like if I could and my parents wanted to I have a land have land uh, here in Burlington where I could easily put a you know seven or eight hundred square foot um, garden suite for them rather than them going into a condo and they could have a garden and everything here and I wouldn't even know they're there unless they came and knocked on the door yeah uh, so they, they have their they have their independence uh, and you could, you know, you could still walk around your house in your underwear without scaring your parents. And uh, exactly, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, no, no, well, that's that's the truth, right? And yeah. here's another aspect to it that Marco and I have also been looking into. So, what one thing about our company is that we we are uh, very conscious of the latest building uh, technologies and also technologies within the home. So, so what will be, uh, you know. It, it, as, as we develop our, our website and, and bring more of our um, 
of our connections on board, uh, you know, we will be showcasing, um, you know, ideas like uh, creating homes where, um, you know, the elder they are, elderly they are, or older people can live. And there's mechanisms there to, to assist them in that living. So, you know, uh, creating them in such a manner where there aren't, it's easy access for showers and baths, where there's electronics in the house that monitor, not monitor them, but, you know, really, really advanced stuff to, to if there's an emergency, they, they can, uh, you know, contact people or, or it, it's very, it, it's, it's easy to do, right? So, yeah. um, you know, put, put, mechanisms in there so that if they need assisted living people can come in and out very easy uh these are things that that are so advanced now that you know back in the day in the from a real estate perspective 20 years ago you know even even less than that you'd walk into a house like this and it felt like it felt like we were walking into a hospital you know but these days everything's so stealth everything's so smart uh that we can create houses like that and 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 um and they should be created like that. It's a little bit of an extra expense, so that you know our our uh, our elderly you know population, and it is it is getting older, um, have access to these amazing places to live as well. For sure, no, makes sense. So, you know, this is a great uh, uh, introduction for viewers into this company. I like it, uh, Alto Basso Build Solutions. Um, before I get into some of the final questions, uh, Marco, you touched upon it earlier. And, and David, you mentioned it as well. So what is the, the ballpark? So I heard about half a million. So I, um, if you can give just a general, you know, let's say price range, I know that it's going to depend widely on size, materials, how you want to equip it. But just to give a sense, like, is that about the range where you mentioned before, you know, half a million versus buying a new house? I think, or, yeah. I think I, I'd like to begin by saying that, you know, all the wonderful things that um, this space is providing and the opportunities that it's providing or solutions that it's providing for the clientele, the one thing that isn't easy or the one thing that is extremely frustrating is the actual getting it done, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to get into the, the, the price as well. But the process from, from planning... Right. You know, so, you know, our, our motto is from inspiration to completion. And that's where like our service uh, really kicks in. Right. So we don't we don't charge a service fee uh, per se. So we have our partners that pay us through um, um, profit, their their profit margins that they would otherwise have if we didn't present them to uh, to the specific. So right. whether it be the architect, the uh, um, um, urban planners, uh, the, the the builders, the different trades, depending on what part of the job they're at. Again, from inspiration to completion, we can find ourselves, uh, uh, depending on the jurisdiction, to, to help people out. So uh, in doing that, it is a process. It is something that's going to take, you know, several months to do. So as we speak about the price of the actual unit, there's also the other costs that are involved, which are th that part of the planning. So in the introduction to the architect, what does an architect cost? You know, what is, you know, what does this stage cost? How should you finance those different parts? Mm -hmm. right? So when we look at um, uh, um, uh, the unit itself, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what I, uh, what I believe that most of your viewers are gonna, are gonna be interested in is, you know, how much, the, how's, how much does the actual unit cost? Right, so when you look at your traditional type of uh, construction, everyone's building a little bit better. Uh, Dave and I are a strong proponent uh, of you know building greener, building uh, uh, better performing, building mm -hmm. envelopes, uh, not just for today, uh, you know, not just for tomorrow for your own pocketbook or those are going to be of your tenants and or children or family members, whoever is going to occupy the space. Right. Uh, but you know, in general, our our planet uh, uh, as well, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when you combine all those things, we're going to use the most uh, uh, the, the most accurate pricing because this is something that we're currently uh, helping a, 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 a client in Hamilton build a, a just under 700 square foot uh, property. She's looking for that unit uh, in the $290,000 
price range. Right? So that gives people a, a good idea, but I like what you said earlier, because sometimes, you know, we just look at price, but it's more than price. It's, a, it's about the convenience. It's about actually the value. And, and that was going to be my final question just to kind of, uh, you know, wrap this up is, uh, you know, and you mentioned many good points just to kind of summarize it, but, you know, what differentiating factors, what com competitive advantage why, why people should call Altobasso Solutions versus, let's say, you know, a few others that might be out there that are in this, a similar space. Dave's from the real estate world. He's been there for a quarter century. He knows every single jurisdiction where these are permitted to be built. Uh, me and finance, uh, obviously, that's a major factor because most people want to want to know not just how much it costs, but also how do we, you know, how do we finance each stage because mm -hmm. it's not a, just a it's it's not a linear you know get all your money uh on 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 june 1st for something that might not be done until july 1st the year after because right. it's not something that starts and stops within a couple of months from planning to to finishing you know it could take seven months it could take nine months it could take 12 months each jurisdiction will have its own little nuance and 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 time frame for these things to be uh, to be executed, but you know we have to bring that price that 295 for a 700 square foot unit in Hamilton. Anybody here that that has looked at any pricing for any kind of unit in Hamilton, Toronto, Burlington, Oakville, you go up and down the Greater Golden Horseshoe or the GTA, you're not going to really buy anything in that $300,000 range, $350,000 range. Downtown Toronto, you know, for a 1300 square foot. Laneway uh, property, you're yeah. getting into the half a million dollar range, but what the hell can you buy for half a million dollars at 1,300 square feet as a fully detached or, you know, as a fully detached home, whether it's going to be used for your own purposes or for rental. So you see that it becomes something that's eye-opening to people that, yes, there's a process to do it. So our services connect our expertise on our own worlds so that when we connect you to the the architect the the builder and everybody in between up to the point that you receive your key um yeah. we we do that as um as as a team within Excellent. ourselves where you know that each point of your journey is managed and dealt with uh by 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 dave and myself yeah and and so it sounds like you're a one-stop shop full turnkey solution um yeah so, so, so great yeah, go ahead, David. If I can, if I can you know, say it's all, it's about service, right? A hundred percent about service. Like we, we, Marco and I come from, you know, both come from industries where it's 100% service oriented. Um, and, you know, with real estate agents um, and, and, you know, in emergencies for Marco as well, and there's always a, a fire burning somewhere. We're working weekends, we're working evenings to make sure that, that things come together. Now, um, you know, there's other companies that are offering a different perspective of where to come in. Um, we come in from the real estate and financing, which in and of itself are very strong positions in the housing market. To begin with, right. right. Um, we also, Marco, I mean, we don't have time now, but Marco's and, and I both have been involved in major construction projects. I mean, not condo buildings, but, you know, house, major house and, and Marco on the industrial side as well for when he used to be in, in, in the restaurant business. So right. uh, we understand contracting. We're not professional contractors, but we understand contracting, general contracting. We, in the last uh, two and a half years, since 2019, we've, uh, we've had a very, very strong learning curve with regards to architecture, engineering, urban planning, and all the, all the intricacies that are needed uh you know to, to understand how a build takes place so so we what what's important what's uh, our a distinction for us is what we take is um our builders our architects have to be service orient, oriented as well we're not just hiring people um you know just to make money or we want to make sure that that builder and that architect and that or whoever else is in between is the right person for that job so they can do it in the most efficient and effective manner to keep your costs down, right? And keep it on time, right? That's important. Doing also. that on your own. And if I can jump back in, uh, I, and doing that on your own is, it's not just very frustrating. It's difficult. It's time consuming. And if you don't have that time, yeah. um, 
your your project can either be extended or the frustration will just have you stop. So our value add is that we're going to be your voice. We're going to be in constant and daily contact. We're going to answer your question. You can save thousands of dollars uh, in, in just planning it correctly. Yeah. Right? So it's no cost. It's no extra cost to you. But yeah. those extra thousands of dollars are either in your back pocket or again, if it's for your own use, maybe you can uh, upgrade uh, a certain uh, materials. Maybe you can uh, uh, have better fixtures better furniture for yourself. And that's what Dave and I, uh, again, to, to, to his point is we're so service oriented and we're, and we, we, you know, it's, it's, it, it's basically, um, uh, that, that extra that we give to the client, that, that peace of mind that they also receive that in this journey that again, can span from seven months to 12 months, that peace of mind that somebody has, Absolutely. Not just with the, the time frame, but also how their monies are being spent is, is crucial. And to your point, uh, uh, Rick, is that one stop shop of um, the entire project, the entire financing, but also to cre create a, a, a really strong wall of peace of mind for the client that each stage is um, fantastic. Uh, you know, their, their best interests are our best interests. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. So we've got about uh, 20 seconds left. I just wanted to thank you for this information. I encourage all the viewers to check out altobasobuildsolutions.com and uh, contact Marco and David to help you with your investment and living needs. So thank thanks, you. Rick. Thanks, Rick.